Welcome to the Wholesome Roots mashup with the Butcher, the Baker, and the Queso Maker. So, uh, the ladies are behind the camera today, and we're bringing the sexy back in our duct cotton overalls. But really what we're doing, we are going to make biscuits. So if you hop on over to our Instagram, uh, what's ours, at Butcher, Baker, and the Queso Maker, and at Wholesome Roots, you'll see where we posted about our dinner tonight. We had deconstructed uh, chicken and biscuits. We're in Georgia. So what we did, we basically made homemade biscuits and poured this nice, thick, rich uh, chicken soup, like gravy type thing, over the biscuits. Really good. Hep oh, hep over. Hop over to the Instagram. Uh, go ahead and follow us. Check it out. You'll see the pictures. So no, there was no rabbit. It was turkey. He said hop. Well, you know, and um, so Ryan loved the biscuits. He was impressed with my biscuit making skills. So tonight we uh, dinner's over. The kids are digitally pacified, so we're gonna make cassava, rather attempt to make cassava. We're gonna make cassava flour biscuits, and we're gonna see if we can get our light, fluffy, flaky pastry uh, consistency with some gluten-free flour alternatives. So if this turns out, you're welcome, and if this turns out, enjoy the train wreck. So, we <laughs> it's, it's why lie, right? Okay, so we need three cups of cassava flour. So, I've never actually cooked with this. Does it does it taste like regular flour? Uh, as far as I know. Yeah, I haven't noticed any taste difference. So what other stuff do you make with cassava flour when you're not trying biscuits and stuff? Honestly, I've not really used it. I just knew we had it in the pantry. So. Okay. So what you're saying is, and what you want all the people watching our, our channels to know, is we have no idea what we're doing. I'm saying... I think I'm a good cook, but I always struggle with baking, and, and biscuits are one of my favorite things, and your biscuits were way better than any biscuits that I've ever made, so... Well, I appreciate te that. Teach me teach how to make them so okay. I can do this, and if you can make it gluten-free with that wonderful cassava flour, that would be excellent. Sweet. So that makes me the Jedi Master. You're the Padawan. So, um... We have three cups of cassava flour. Cassava flour, correct me if I'm wrong, is one for one with regular flour, right? Possibly, yes. maybe? Okay, well. Yes, we're gonna go with that. You'll know in the end. So we have a teaspoon of salt. This recipe, by the way, is out of the joy of cooking, which no. my. Better Homes and Gardens. Oh, Better Homes and Gardens, which my wife brought to our marriage. We have three quarters of a teaspoon of cream of tartar. We have a teaspoon of salt. We have a tablespoon of baking powder. And then we have a tablespoon of um, sugar. So I know we are in Georgia right now, and I know there's that whole like northern and southern cornbread, too sweet, not too sweet. I don't know if that, that, that sort of uh, struggle exists with biscuits, but these aren't too sweet, despite having a tablespoon of, um, a whole tablespoon of sugar. So we just, you mix it in. We have a fork. Um, and then, so one of the things that I have found, and I totally ripped this off from a Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives episode. It was one of the places, Guy, whatever his name is, uh, was, was visiting. They, uh, to make their biscuits, they actually, um, they used a grater. Now theirs was mechanical on a mixer, but they used a grater and then, thank you, they used a grater and then they grate the butter in lieu of trying to cut it in. So what happens with pastry, what makes it so flaky is when the butter melts and the water and the, and the butter evaporates, it leaves voids. And that's what makes the, the flaky pastry, like a croissant. Um, I prefer Bordeaux, but we'll talk about croissant. Uh, croissant uh, is flaky because the butter is in a layer. So biscuits are just like, um, just like pioneer croissant. So um, in order to make the pastry really nice, um, you you want the butter as small as possible. And the best way to do that is to freeze it and then grate it. So you get all these little butter pieces. So if you can get a plate, a little plate to grate the butter on, I will get the butter and then we will get to grating. And the recipe calls for uh, three quarters of a cup or a stick and a half of butter. So you can put it in the freezer. If you know you're gonna bake these, you know, a good hour ahead of time is is nice get it nice and firm you are kind of racing the clock because the friction of grating it and your warm hand softens it but the the point really is to make those those butter bits as small as possible and i, I prefer this over um 
over using a pastry knife or a pastry blender or even two butter knives. It works well with scones too. And I think when, uh, if you were to see my, my normal wheat flour, gluten, gluten infested biscuits, they have more of a scone look to them than they do um, even biscuits you see other people make. And I think it's because of the butter being grated. Again, not my idea. Everything I know how to do well, I learned from television or YouTube. I'm a child of the 80s. Okay, so let's get this. Sorry, guys. As you get to the end, be careful that you don't grate your knuckles because no one wants fleshy biscuits. Or if you do, hey, that's, that's on you. Okay, so if you guys want to come in close to the camera here, I was explaining to Ryan earlier, uh, before you add the milk, you put, your, you put your butter in. And then one of the things that allows it to, as far as I know, get really nice and flaky is you... You want to get as much butter off the grater as possible. Then you you take the the freshly grated butter and you toss it in the flour. And you want each one coated because you don't want it to be a blob of butter in here. You want it to emulate that butter that's been cut in with a pastry knife. So it's just a matter of convenience and consistency that you get with the uh, with the grater. If you have some big chunks and they're too big, you can run them through your fingers and just incorporate them, kind of like you would with a pie crust. But we want something that looks like a loose, gravelly consistency with the flour and the butter mixed in. So sort of like pebbly butter. So, now I was explaining to Ryan, um, I have, I've been met with relatively positive success with my biscuits by not overworking them. So when you're using regular bread flour, as you know, gluten is a protein in the flour, mixes with a liquid, it forms carbohydrate chains, and that's what gives your bread structure. If you want a nice chewy bread, that's good. Biscuits, you want them to be flaky and tender. So the less you work it, the better off you'll be. So you want to handle it as the least amount as possible. So we'll take a fork and our milk, pour the milk in, we'll stir it around, let's incorporate it. And this is the fun part. This is where it's really a swag because we have never done this with cassava flour. So I don't know if it, I don't know if it absorbs water at a different rate. And another unknown factor in the biscuits is um, it's gluten free. So can you have too little gluten formation? Right. Yeah, you know, so this is kind of the fun thing. I was explaining to Ryan too, in my opinion, cooking is kind of an art with a little bit of science and baking is more of a science that lends itself to some art along the way. So um, we'll see. So you can, you can see here it's kind of forming a kind of forming a dough. It's not coming together like it normally would with biscuits um, with wheat flour. So I'm I'm inclined to add a little more milk. All right. So just yeah, a just splash. A, just a little bit because we can always add uh, a little, more, little more. That's good. All right. So that's the thing you can add but you can't take away. So correct. We'll try to get this to form up into a dough. A female deer, Ray, a drop of golden sun, me, a name I call myself. My brain never shuts down. <laughs> I think just a little more. Probably that same amount again. That's good. So, oops. Hi, Kate. Hi. You having fun over there? Yes. Okay, so it's kind of coming together. Um, feels nothing like traditional biscuit flour. Um, 
Rather, it doesn't feel like traditional biscuits made with regular wheat flour, but I think we've got something we might be able to work with. So let's dust our surface. Let's turn it out. Where's our, there's a wooden dowel over on your, Yeah, so this is, it almost feels like masa. It has the texture and the feel of, thank you, of like a, like a tortilla mix that you might make with masa. And that seems appropriate because masa is made with uh, corn flour that doesn't have any gluten to hold together, so. This looks good. So the recipe calls for three quarters of an inch. So we will, so we will uh, roll this out. Okay. Stone, you want to grab the stone cookie sheet? Grab the stone. So they're sticking together and they're coming out with a very nice biscuit like um, look and texture. So another thing I was, I was, when Ryan and I were discussing biquetry earlier, is that a word? Yes, it, it sounds, of course it's, it's a word. You know it we can now. charge more if we call ourselves biscuitures. You just coined it. I did, I did. We have proof. Ryan and Paul, Georgia's greatest biscuitures. Um, the art of biscuitry. The art of biscuitry, making Southern grandmas cry since 2019. Um, <laughs> so, I love Georgia, by the way. People are great, no offense. Um, so I was explaining to Ryan too that when you make when you make biscuits, even with specifically with the flour ones, you have all these leftover cutouts, and as you progressively combine the cutouts and re-knead them to cut more, um, your biscuits should progressively get more tough because you're essentially overworking the dough. So it may be helpful to remember which end of the cookie sheet was the the virgin rolling, as it were, and then those will be those will be the most tender. And that's what traditional gluten. Gluten, right? Gluten ones. So these. It shouldn't these matter. This could be totally different. Yeah. Okay, so the recipe for the regular wheat flour ones calls for us to bake this off at 450 for 10 minutes. Earlier today, when we did the other the two batches for dinner, it took actually took closer to like 15. So we'll uh, we'll meet it at the middle at about 12, and then check it out and let's see how it's going when we pop this in the oven. So, we'll take this together. It's kind of the exciting part, not having to work about, worry about gluten formation. You can just you can manhandle this stuff as much as you want. Another consideration too when you're working with the, uh, when you're working with a shredded butter is it will warm up so it's not, it's not terribly hot in here tonight, so I don't think that's gonna be much of an issue. But if you're doing this in a hot kitchen or uh, say in the summer, you'd probably want to, um, with much haste, cut out your biscuits and get them, get them in the oven. This is so exciting. Thank you guys for letting us be part of this. Thank you for showing me how to do this. I think, folks, that's going to be the most our Pampered Chef stone. So there you go. A rack of gluten-free cassava flour biscuits. So we'll get back to you guys in about 15 minutes, and we'll see how these turn out. Oh, oh my goodness. Wow. Okay, so uh, if you want to get the camera in there, ladies, check this out. So these have gone a full 15 minutes, and if you look at them, they uh, you have some of that you have some of that flaky, um, I don't know, splitting on the sides that's indicative of like that flaky pastry in the biscuits. They've not really puffed up as much as the regular ones, and Ryan and I were talking about the differences that might occur because of the uh, the total lack of gluten. In there, there's just no matrix for the for the expansion of the gases as the water cooks off from the butter and stuff. But that's really super encouraging. They almost look like a, like a Scottish oat cake, just something hearty and 
really dense that'll that'll fuel you all day long in the highlands. Um, be that as it may, they're not as golden brown on the top as I'd like, so we'll put them in for a few more minutes. Probably give them another three or four minutes and pull it back out and take a look at it. So, oops, sorry. okay. So our biscuits have gone another uh, three-ish minutes. I forgot to set the timer. We're eyeballing it. But alas, they are done. Lo and behold, cue the sound of angels singing. Oh, oh there you have it, folks. Gluten-free cassava flour biscuits. Flatbread. Flatbread. <laughs> I'll let you have the thick one. You want to... I'm so, sure they're going to be delicious. Either way. Let, might let them sit for a little bit. You're going to burn yourself. I have hot hands. That's my superpower. Do you have a hot mouth? No. no I'm not even going to No, I burnt, I burnt the top of my <laughs> mouth with pizza that one time, you know. But I have hot hands. I'm able to pick up very hot things. Asbestos. And it does not. So, here, hold that up there, hot hands. Hot hands, Ryan. Okay, so if you look at it, it's really hot. Um, I told you. If you look at it, nobody listens to me. If you look at it, it, it has that that nice Striation. biscuity look. Yeah, the like the the layers. It's like a it's like a sedimentary rock of baked biscuity goodness. All right, y'all, welcome to our biscuit reveal party, where we're gonna find out if these cassava flour biscuits hold up, and if they taste delicious, I'll let you know. So they're not really... Are they kind of doughy in the middle? They're kind of doughy in the middle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. some things just aren't meant to be made gluten free. Maybe not. They look good on they the outside. Do. Maybe we could have Googled it and see if someone else Probably could have had a recipe. <laughs> Probably. But this was more fun. This was fun though. I may have to retain a lawyer though if someone, you know. I'm still committed. They're so chewy. He's the honest one over there. That's just not good. <laughs> what was that, Paul? It's like doughy bubble gum and sconced and crusty pastry. Flaky pastry. Maybe if the, the center could be sweet and it would be a nice dessert. You know, I think if I had to be gluten free, I would probably. Learn to love them? Just have really bad Thanks. diarrhea because I wouldn't give up biscuits. <laughs> I wonder if we cooked them at a lower temperature for a longer period of time. I don't know. Maybe we'll never know. But maybe the viewers do. You know what this means? <laughs> Rose didn't even know. I know next time I, I do this recipe, I'm going to use regular flour and not this stuff. Mm -hmm. oh, this is not good. I'm sorry, Ryan. <laughs> Chickens will like it. Or the compost. Or the compost. Oh, it's like gum. <laughs> I'm still committed. I'm, 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 I'm owning it. If you have to eat gluten free, though, that's different, guys. You guys have the well, see, luxury they're healthy. privilege. They're so much healthier for me. You know, you could virtue signal with these, like a Tesla. It's basically the Tesla of biscuits. It makes absolutely no sense. It's overpriced, and people look at you like, "Why do you even bother?" I'm not even gonna lie. I, I strangely enjoy this. It's not. I'm not. How do you get past that mucusy consistency inside? Mmm, delicious mucus. Hmm. <laughs> All I can think about is that green wad of phlegm in the, me in the medicine commercial. <laughs> I'm eating. You were fine when I referred to it as mucus. Because <laughs> he you... thinks of okra when he thinks of mucus. And that's oh. yummy. Mucilage. <laughs> don't make these biscuits. Please, whatever you do, don't. Substitute the cassava flour for a regular traditional gluten flour. Don't overwork your dough and you're gonna have beautiful biscuits like the ones we'll show you that he made earlier. Right, and uh, as an aside, if you've ever watched, um, if you've ever watched Wholesome Roots or The Butcher, The Baker, and The Case of Maker and asked yourself, self, are they in real life the way they are on camera? That's 100% true because we just showed you an epic failure and uploaded it for the world to see. So. Yep, yep. Want another one? Uh, no, I'm good, thanks. <laughs> so uh, maybe we could uh, play some hockey with that aid, eh? like get some Labatt Blues and uh, play some Canadian, Canadian hockey. Huh? Kind of mm -hmm. pucky. Why do I like this? 
It's growing on me. <laughs> That's what happens when you have to be gluten free. You start to like the gluten free stuff. You're right. It grows on you as you chew it. It quite literally gets bigger <laughs> and bigger <laughs> and bigger. Oh, he's not. He's starting to get really full. <laughs> They're heavy. They're very heavy. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> hey guys, thanks for Bye. thanks for. Uh, Thanks for sticking around. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on uh, both channels if you can. And always uh, from the Butcher, the Baker, and the Queso Maker. We appreciate your time. We appreciate you coming along for this crazy thing we call life. And we look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. Send us your address and we will send you these. You could punish your children with them. I think so. <laughs> <laughs>